This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going back to the 1920s and we're each gonna be trying to have the best speakeasy. We're gonna be inviting all sorts of popular and famous people in like great jazz musicians playing the saxophone. We're gonna be bringing in great sports figures like Babe Ruth. Uh, we're trying to be uh, you know, the best speakeasy around. We're also gonna be offering some hooch which will allow us to take extra actions. Today we're taking a look at Speakeasy Blues. This is from Artana Games. This is a dice drafting Euro style game with set collection. Let me show you how it's played and I'll see you on the other side. Here's the board for Speakeasy Blues. Over the course of the game, you'll be getting a points in a myriad of different ways, but you'll be using different colored dice from a pool to take your actions in dice drafting. Each player is going to get their own Speakeasy, and at the beginning of the game, they'll get two cards. They'll get to choose one of them to be their Speakeasy. Each one has a name, but it also gives you certain starting things that make you a little bit different from everyone else. So in this case, we are the uh, New Stork Club, 51 East. We start with three Reputation. Reputation is important. It's going to go up and down throughout the game, depending on which actions you take as you gain or lose Reputation. But at the end of the game, this is going to give you an amount of points depending on where you are on this track. We're also going to get some money. One of these nice tokens in the game is also five that you can use for change and we're gonna get some hooch which is another form of currency to spend in the game to take powerful actions these are four spots in your speakeasy that you'll be placing cards in a sort of tableau building throughout the game the game lasts 10 rounds and each round each of the players going clockwise is going to take two different actions based upon the dice they take now out here we see dice on different action spots and then we see a pool of dice on your turn you're simply going to take any two dice off the board that are the same colored dice then you're going to roll them here and add to this pool so as you take dice off you might be opening up spots on the board that you're hoping to place those dice as sort of a worker placement uh, action selection if you will so let's say we remove the two blue dice and we roll them into this pool so let's say we roll those two blue we have the music note and the hand now you're going to uh, take any two of the same colored dice and use both of those actions. Now, if you don't like these options, you can spend one dollar of money and re-roll all of the dice in this pool so you have some mitigation of the actions with money. So let's say I take those blue dice and in either order I can place them on the, the corresponding action of that die. Now, over here in the favors, you have three different spots you can go because they're all open. But of course, if there was a die of another kind here, we could not place it on where that die is. But here it's all open. If you go here, you'll get to take a token of this different type. These are from two different crime families and this is from the officers or the cops. Now, these are important because you'll be using these as uh, majority set collection at the end of the game. Essentially, whoever has the most of each of these three is gonna get a lot of points, but I'll go over that at the end. But you're trying to collect certain ones of these for set collection. Also, you're going to get some money. Now, the, as I mentioned, the game is 10 rounds long, and each round, there's going to be different values of money on these three different tracks. So if I go here, I get to take one of these and $2. If I go here, I take one of these and three, here, one of these and three. Now, each uh, round has an event. We won't go over these now. We'll go over some of these later. Now, notice that this one uh, is just empty. It's white. These two have red on them because these are crime families. If I had gone here, taken one of these and the money, I would have to go down one of my reputation in my speakeasy. And you see going down is in this direction. Some things are going to let you go up. And again, this is important because if you're ever down all the way to the bottom, you cannot take an action to make you go down. And again, at the end of the game, uh, wherever this is, is going to get you that many points. If you max out, that's 15 points, which is a lot in this game. But let's say we just went here, we took one of these and we got our $2. Now, since we chose blue this round, I have to place this other blue die. By the way, if you select a die and it cannot be placed, you re-roll it and you place it in an open spot uh, with that uh, icon, but you don't take the action. So here we go here. Again, I have to go down on my reputation, but this allows me to take either one of these. And these are tokens that you can spend on your turn to do different things. Like this one allows you to change the die that you're placing to anything and get two money. This one allows you to, when you play something, you actually get to take that action twice. So you would select one of these, by coming here and doing the jazz, and th that's how those are used uh, on future turns. Now that I've taken my two actions, it simply goes to the next player's turn, doing the same things, grabbing two dice off the board, rolling them into the pool, selecting two dice, and taking your two actions. So now I'm gonna talk about the other actions here. If you go to society, you'll be able to bring some cool people into your speakeasy. 
Now here we see different people. King Oliver, wow, great trumpet player. Now you see the little jazz logo here. Babe Ruth, we have sports. Uh, Elizabeth Arden, uh, we have Jimmy Doolittle, so transportation. Now these are people that we put into our speakeasy. Some of them will give us uh, immediate one-time things like $3 or go up two on our reputation track where other ones will actually allow us to take different actions. So let's show you how some of these work. By going there, you get to basically get one of these cards and place it in your speakeasy. So here we placed Babe Ruth here. Now we could have placed him here or here. And if you decide to place him here or here later, you'll have to spend a dollar or two dollars to open up different spots in your speakeasy. Now you'll be able to put cards on top of these. We'll talk about that later. But what Babe Ruth does is he actually uh, gives you a new action. So let's talk about what this action in general does. And then we'll talk about what Babe Ruth does to that action. Now, normally you can place your die in one of these empty spots. If you place it here, you get a hooch. If you place it here, you go down one in reputation and you get two hooch. Hooch are these bottles of hooch or liquor uh, that was passed around in the speakeasies. Uh, and so that's a way to, to, to be used in some of these special actions. So let's say we ended up placing a die here. You still have to go down reputation if you, if you need to, but then you can activate the special ability on some of these cards. Now this says, basically, I place that die on the board on this action spot and I would spend one hooch, and in this case, to get three hooch and a dollar. So I would spend this one, I would get three and a dollar. And so that's sort of this action that I can take if I like. So there we go, we get that. And they all, they all do a lot of different things. And there's a whole glossary in the book that kind of goes over all the abilities, but that's going to the society. Now, if you go to the collection, you can spend money to start collecting great items. If you go here, you get a dollar towards what it costs, but you have to go down in your reputation. Now, here's the collection row. Now, there are different types. So here we have a car, we have a boat, we have sort of a movie, and uh, we have horses. And so there's a bunch of different ones that you can start to collect. Uh, but basically, you're going to pay the price of whatever this number is. So let's just say we're going to spend $2 and we'll collect this sailboat. Now, when putting things in your speakeasy, collections go there as well. And anytime you put something in a speakeasy, you can cover up what's, what's uh, just below it. However, by covering this up though, it would take away the special ability or action here uh, that I could use. So you have to be careful about when you do this. Obviously this is open, I would put it here, but uh, there's certain times where you'll want to cover certain things and maybe not, uh, because it's gonna start getting pretty full over the course of the game. You have to make tough decisions on which ones to cover up and which ones not to. Now these collections are very important. Uh, they will help you get points at the end of the game, but we'll go over that later. Now these get refilled once you, uh, you know, take cards from them. And also once per turn, you can spend a dollar to refresh these, meaning discard those and put four new ones out or spend a dollar and discard these four and, and uh, you know, refill it. You can do each of these once along with what we showed you earlier, which was spending a dollar to reroll the dice pool. So those are the different ways of mitigating the game using money. Now, if you go here, Either way, you're getting, you're losing reputation because you're going to bring in some crime families into your speakeasy. Uh, and what happens is you get to draw three cards and keep one and put two down here. So you, essentially you're getting one card, but you get to choose from three of them. Now here's the three different types of families that you might find in there. You've got the two crime families and you have the cops. Uh, again, you're only going to select one of these. You put the other two at the bottom of the deck. And these do different things. Now these always go face down in your speakeasy. Uh, and on your turn, you can at any time flip one of these over. Now these do different things. Uh, and, and all the cards from each family do a lot of different things. Uh, this one says all of the players have to go down two in their reputation. Or all of the players have to lose a face-up cop card that they have in their speakeasy. So a lot of these tend to be take that mechanisms. Uh, but the cops can stop you from that. Let's show you how. Because always when you get these, let's uh, put this, say we would have spent a dollar to place it here, it goes face down. Now on a future turn, not the turn you get it, you can flip this over and activate it and do what it says. However, if you're doing this and you're attacking another player with this, in this case it's all players, a player, if they had a cop face down on the top of one of their speakeasies, they could flip it over and regardless of what this is doing, this stops that from happening. And then for the rest of the game, the player that flipped this over, once per turn, they can do this special action, which in this case is swapping any two cards in their speakeasy, bringing some to the front, giving you a lot of flexibility of when, when bringing cards up to activate those actions that may have been covered earlier by other cards. So yes, so that's pretty much what you're doing. You're putting a card always face down. Uh, the crime families you can flip up on a future turn and use, and the cops you're flipping up uh, when someone's trying to do things to you. But these are also worth a uh, certain, uh, you know, a, a icon of this family, which again is going to be worth big set collection points at the end of the game that I'll go over in just a little bit. Now, if you go to the soiree, which is the last spot, you get to activate, and it goes here with any die type. So you can put it there. Again, you're always pushing, putting two of the same color die, but this can be any 
uh, any side of the die, you have to activate all the bottom right corners in your speakeasy. So if our speakeasy looked like this, we're gonna get one, two reputation, and we're gonna get a dollar. Now, if we had one of the crime families, they always uh, give you uh, a negative amount, but you're always only counting the top card in each of the spots in your speakeasy. Now, after everyone's taken a turn, this will slide off, this comes down, this goes up, and a new event will come here. This allows you to see events that are going to possibly trigger you know, a couple of rounds from now. The ones that lightning bolts trigger right then, like for example, on your turn, you can spend one hooch to gain $2. Or when this one's active, you can use other players' speakeasy abilities. That's using other players' abilities on their board. It's really cool. There's three out of the 10 rounds that are gonna be collections. Uh, and these are gonna be different things. Like in this case, if you have the most people in your speakeasy with the sports icon, you'll get four points. And so there's different set collections of those that you're going after as well. So at the end of the game, you'll go through some scoring. First will be majorities for each of the three families. So each player will look at the, the type of tokens and any uh, you know, icons on the crime family cards. If they were not turned over, you would then flip them over for the, for the uh, icons. So we have three of the cops here. So we would look at all the other players, and if I have the most, then we get 10, second most, six, third most, two. You have to have at least one to get some points there. You do that for the other two crime families as well, getting points for that. Then you'd get points for your reputation. Again, wherever it is here, you'd get those amount of points. You'd also then get points, one player would get points for each of the collections that we talked about. For example, whoever has the most baseballs will get four. For example, here I have two baseballs. If I had the most, uh, I would get four additional points. There's always three different uh, set collection collections that you're going over, uh, competitions that you're going over. I think they're called contests actually. Uh, the next is you're gonna get one point automatically for every one of the collections that is out there. So one, two, three, four, I'd get four points for that. Plus, here's the trickiest part of scoring. However, if you have a type of collection, and at least one of them is on the top of one of your speakeasies, you'll get face value for each of the ones in your entire speakeasy, whether they're covered or not. So as you're starting to build these up, you're covering them over with other things that give you better abilities, but you gotta make sure you have one on top somewhere at the end in order to get the points, and it's face value. Now remember, you spent $5 to get this, $2 to get this, so you've spent money for these throughout the game, but they're all gonna be worth that amount of points as long as you get one of that type on the top, and that's a big way to score. And then you'll get points every two hooch is a point, every three dollars is a point. Whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. All right, well, there's Speakeasy Blues. Now, uh, disclosure, I did do a uh, preview for this game uh, when it was on Kickstarter, uh, but the ability to do that video has no bearing on my opinion of it now that I've gotten a full production version. Uh, first of all, great theme. Oh my gosh, the, the whole 1920s, I'm tired of seeing the same old theme and this is just so cool. Like 1920s, jazz, sports, it's like everything I love personally. So I love the theming, it's unique. You don't see this type of thing all the time. Uh, so great job for going off and doing something cool like that. Amazing graphic design and art. You know, Artana games, uh, they just tend to make things that look awesome. You know, you think back to all the Tesla versus Edison, both Duel and both the main game and the expansion and many of the other games they've done, they, they seem to really have graphic design and art just down to a T and I love it in this game. It just looks so classy. It, it fits the time period. So it really draws you in. Now this is a unique dice drafting mechanism. Now this is designed by the same team that brought us Sagrada, which is another game that I absolutely love. And I've never played a game of dice drafting that does it quite like this game does, where you're looking at all the dice on the board and you have to remove two colors and then you roll them into a pool and you're taking two colors and taking those actions. It's really cool because a lot of times you're like, oh, I wanna take this action. Oh, but it's full. So I actually need to pull off these dice and then roll them over here to open up actions that I want. Or maybe I wanna leave dice in actions that I don't really care about that I think other players are gonna to wanna to take later to make it harder for them to do it. So really interesting way of, of doing that. Now, a lot of people might say, well, you might roll a dice and not be able to do what you wanna do. That's true, but you can see what the other dice are there and you have a good idea of what those are. And then yes, the, the throw of the two dice you choose is somewhat random, but you can mitigate that dice with money. So you can spend money to reroll all the dice in the dice pool and that should give you enough things to do uh, that, that you can get done. Now, even with that, sometimes you're gonna not roll what you want and you're gonna have to sort of make a turn in your plan. I tend to like that uh, because most of the time 
I could get what I want, but when I don't, I do have to sort of pivot and see what's the best thing I could do now. Uh, and I liked that aspect of it. I like that you're trying to do set collections with all the different collection cards, whether it's horses uh, or tickets or boats or cars and things like that. Uh, so I like that you're kind of trying to go for big set collections and there's a specific way you have to have them. You know, you gotta have at least one of them on top of any one of your speakeasy spots in order to score points for all of them. So it really has a very interesting way of building your tableau throughout the game. Uh, and this brings me to the next point where you're covering up abilities with other cards. And it's really interesting because it's like, oh, I really want this ability, but this other card is going to cover up something else I don't want. So I've got to cover up this ability uh, or, you know, I, I can't really cover up this collection card because it's not going to be worth anything unless I can get another one or get a special ability that allows me to move it. So the tableau building and covering abilities is just a really cool part of this game. I like that you need sort of a currency of hooch in order to activate some of those special abilities on those different society cards. So you bring all these different figures in that are, you know, historical figures, which I love, and they have special abilities that are more powerful than the normal ones, but you've got to spend some hooch in order to get that, which is, you know, another action you've got to take to go get those at some point, but they really come in handy as the game goes on. I like the different crime cards between the two crime families and the officers and all the majorities that you're trying to fight for there. And you can see a lot of the tokens people have and you can figure out where you're at. But if they have their, you know, their crime people face down, you don't know what they are, right? So you can sort of hide them. And that's an interesting part, too, because a lot of times you'll want to flip those over to use their powerful abilities. But you're giving away uh, more information about where you are in the majority. So it's really a balance as to do I really want this powerful ability now and let everyone know what I have? Or is it not really gonna do me so good right now? I'll just leave it there and let people wondering what I have and continue to fight for majorities. I like that in the events that come up, there's contests and you're also trying to win majorities there. So there's a lot of things to think about, set collection, majorities. Uh, I really enjoyed the game. Anything negative? Sure, uh, downtime can definitely be a factor uh, because you know as people roll dice and as people take things off, you might think you know what you wanna do, but the player before you took the dice you wanted and now you really gotta rethink your turn. Uh, and that can lead to some analysis paralysis if you tend to have that or people in your group do. Sometimes you'll have to replan your turn and you won't know it until it's your turn or just before it. Uh, so downtime can be a possible factor here. Um, now this could really use a scoreboard because at the end you're adding up all these points and there's no score sheet or scoreboard. I think they missed the boat on this one. Uh, I would have liked to have maybe seen the board flip over and there's a nice cool looking scoreboard or just included some score sheets uh, something like that to keep track of everyone's score as they're going through it. Uh, and also the game says 45 minutes on the box. And I think it's longer than advertised. With two players that know what they're doing and have played before, you could play it in 45 minutes. Uh, I've, in my experience, it's been about 25 minutes per player, even with players that know what they're doing, because there is a lot to think about. And that's not a bad thing. There's lots of things to think about. But just be warned that it's not the 45 minutes the box says. Three players consistently took us about an hour and 15, and four players just around 90 minutes, maybe a little bit more, uh, about 25 minutes per player. So longer than advertised, not a huge con for me because the game's great, but you should know that it does take longer if you're trying to fit this into a specific time frame. So overall, I love the game, and it's going to get a, hey, very thematic saxophone serenade of Speakeasy Blues that has saxophone players in it. So let's hit it. This video was sponsored by Miniature Market's Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.